Bon Clay is joining the Straw Hats, is what I would like to say, as would others. Bon Clay was so loyal to Luffy and was ready to sacrifice himself over and over again, despite not even being in his crew. He deserves a spot for sure. If Luffy ever finds out that Bon Clay is alive, I feel like he definitely has an honorary place among the crew. Just like Yamato, Kinemon, and Momonomonom, Luffy would let Bon Clay sail with the crew in a heartbeat. Really fun story though, because Bon Clay has already joined the crew. Bon Clay Clay's voice actor is of course the phenomenal Kazuki Yao, who you may recognize for playing 1-2 Django, but is ever so slightly more well known for playing Frankie. There's actually this really hilarious interview where Yao claims that it was his master plan to just continuously keep voicing new One Piece characters like, over and over and over again until eventually one of them joined the crew. And to be fair, his plan worked. And it really makes me want to see a scene in the future featuring Django, Bon Clay, and Frankie all having a conversation, because it would essentially be the same guy talking to himself. Bon Clay is far from the only character that people wish would have joined the crew though. There was no reason not to add Carrot full time. So I actually agree with this and I'm, I'm not even the biggest fan of Carrot. I actually prefer the vegetable to the cartoon bunny. But even I have to admit that she had everything perfectly set up for her. Of all of the travelers, Carrot had probably the best chemistry with the crew, as well as the real time tragic flashback resulting in the inherited will of Pedro. The whole wanting to bring about the dawn of the world. You know, the thing it is that can only be achieved by helping the straw hats. For the entire time that Carrot was with them, she acted as a lookout. And then at the end of Wano, it's all like, we, cat and dog, are going to make you, eclectic 15-year-old bunny, the new leader of our entire tribe. Which I think was only done to give Carrot a solid reason not to join the crew, because I guess it did work that one time with Vivi, but Carrot was done much less effectively. Although the decisions of Nekomamushi and Inorashi have always been just as a little bit questionable. In fact, when it comes to Carrot, she was a member of Inorashi's Musketeers, and yet she dons the green cloak of Nekomamushi's guardians. Hmm. To be fair, this is probably for Pedro-based reasons. Sort of like how Gohan wears Piccolo's clothes in Dragon Ball instead of his absent father's gi. But there are many, many other minks that should have been the leader before Carrot. Like Shishili and Wanda, Yomo, the big old sheep dude. But you know what? Even bring Pecoms back. In fact, I really like the idea of Pecoms coming back to lead the tribe. But Carrot was served up to us on a silver platter. And then what happened is we watched the chef dump the dish in the bin. But she's not the only one. Yamato, because we need more plants. Plot. Plot is of course the main reason why people wanted Yamato to join the crew. There are of course two massive unresolved plots lingering with Yamato that I think people were just a little bit too desperate to have solved. But for a more substantive reason, Yamato is the one that fits the most out of all the potential members. And they're the one I like the most. Yamato's whole existence in this story is something that I've come to question after Wano. I'm not gonna go into why I have a whole Yamato video for my Yamato feelings. But just as a fun thing, people were so, so certain that Yamato was going to join the crew. I was indeed one of them, and I would have bet so many units of currency on it. But even I wouldn't have been quite as brave as this woman, who got a tattoo of all of the straw hats on her back, featuring Yamato at the very bottom there, right before the actual bottom. You've got to wait for confirmation. Even if it seems 99.9% .9 likely, there's still a 0.1%. And that fan wasn't the only one who jumped to conclusions in a very permanent way. Immediately after Gear 5th happened, this gent acquired a tattoo of Luffy before the official color scheme was revealed. So now he has a rather permanent golden Super Saiyan fan art version of Luffy that we were all originally working with. The reason why I know that he got that tattoo probably the week of the reveal is because the colors were stated in pretty much the very next chapter. But look, this fan base is extremely passionate and a bit overly enthusiastic, if anything. The zombie horse and tree would have been great additions. I unironically agree with this. Zombie tree and zombie unicorn are some of my all time favorite tertiary characters. And Luffy, he did ask them to join, so it was well and truly on the table. They also have real names, by the way. Zombie Unicorn is Unigaro, whilst our tree friend's name is Mokodonald, which is a bit of a dual language portmanteau taking the name McDonald and then violently fusing it with the Japanese word for tree being Moku. So it becomes Mokudonarudo. And I know it seems absurd, but just think, if this did actually happen, then it means that Oda would have given them tragic backstories and even dreams of their own, tree dreams, as if you don't wanna know what trees dream about. Perhaps McDonald grew up in a poor forest where he was constantly looking looked down upon by all of the other elder trees, primarily because they were taller than him and that was the only direction they could look at him. Meanwhile, Unigaro always held a dream of getting into craft brewing. However, due to the fact that he was a horse, well, that heavily hindered the idea, but hence why he and McDonald are always drinking together. Oda would have 
have, and in my opinion, should have made it work. In retrospect, McDonald actually reminds me a lot of Green Bull. Their aesthetic similarities are so undeniable that they may as well be blood related. But I'd also like to bring some awareness to the issue of spelling on the internet, because a lot of people wanted Zombie Tree and Zombie Unicorn on the crew, and I understand that. But Captain Buggy here went in a different direction, and instead of a zombie horse, he wanted a zombie horse. It's just one letter switch, but it changes the meaning of the entire sentence. I always thought Paulie would make a great addition and his interaction with Sanji would be great comedy. I think I've gone into this before, but this is a fascinating historical footnote. Back when Water 7 was being published weekly, a lot, and I mean a lot of people, thought that Paulie was genuinely being set up to become the next Straw Hat because we were looking for a ship, right? Frankie was pretty firmly painted as a detestable villain and Paulie was really the only member of Galila who had some sort of positive chemistry with the crew. I mean, I say positive, he's more like the anti-Sanji, by which I mean, instead of getting excited over various scantily clad women, Bolly was the much more prudish guy who kept yelling at people to cover up. So he no doubt would have gone on to form a rivalry with Sanji of Zoro proportions. But then the closer we got to any slobby, the more undeniably obvious Frankie became, probably because Frankie got an entire flashback. That usually cements things. I say usually, again, there's Yamato. Bartolomeo would have fit the crew perfectly. He's wacky, has a fun personality, and his DF is OP. He's the old ultimate support, not to mention a combo attack with Luffy's gum gum pistol, and his barrier barrier would have been awesome. I think the only way Bartolomeo fits in with this crew is through his own fan fiction. Because as it is, Bartolomeo is, he's kind of fanficy Because he's essentially Oda inserting all of us into the story. So I suppose in a way he's already a member of the crew, because we all get to observe the adventures of the Straw Hats as if we're there with them. And I think that with Bartol specifically, his quirk might get a little bit old if we're always watching him fanboying whenever any one does anything. What I really want more of though are his homage attacks. The moment I became a lifelong Bartolomeo fan was when he used God's fist. And I need to see his homages to the rest of the Straw Hats. Like say, does he create a thin barrier to replicate Zoro's swords or even coat his foot in some sort of barrier ball to imitate Sanji? And you know, come to think of it, I, I really miss the Grand Fleet. It's been over 350 chapters since they formed. That, that was like 10 years ago. I will always say Gangster Gastino. You and me both, because that sounds like a solid recipe for comedy. Just this ongoing gag of Luffy having someone aboard the ship who he absolutely hates, but never realizes that it's Caesar. And Caesar has to try and keep up the act despite everyone else knowing who he is. Like how everyone knows that Soga King is Usopp except for Luffy and Chopper. And actually thinking about it, imagine if Luffy asked Soga King to join the crew. We would have a similar situation where Usopp has to frantically pretend to be Soga King. And every time Soga King goes around a corner or something, Usopp magically appears and does the classic, whoa, what did I miss guys? I know this will never happen, but I would love for a villain to somehow join the crew. Not a false villain like Robin who started out being all bad, but was actually all good and only doing the bad things for the greater good. But I mean like a proper antagonist, like Caesar or Carabo. In fact, Carabo is, well, he's almost there because what I want is a villain who may not necessarily be a crew member, but keeps ending up sailing with and getting caught up in the same adventures to the point where he's around the straw hat so often that the world government officially labels them as a straw hat and even gives them a bounty much to the crew's great annoyance. And all the while that villain is trying to undermine the Straw Hats, but generally ends up helping. But I think it's probably too late for something like that. I think that Carabo is, is the best we have. Bellamy. During all the Dress Rosa crewmate discussions, I was really hoping it'd be him. Well, you know, actually speaking of, this would have been a fantastic way for a villain to join the crew. I did a whole video on Helmeppo's evolution as a character and why he's legitimately one of my favorites, but someone equally, if not even more worthy of that kind of examination is Bellamy. Because I'm just gonna put this out there, Bellamy has had more character growth than any Straw Hat. And I think that most redemptive villains have because the Straw Hats are mostly archetypes that exist to punch things and change those around them. I love how Bellamy begins as the most detestable creature Oda is capable of conjuring at the time. And in fact, he is the exact opposite of the ideals presented by Luffy. And not only do we get the satisfaction of seeing him smacked, we also then go on to get smacked by him taking that experience and growing in a positive way. So that by the time he gets smacked again on Dress Rosa, we now feel a completely different emotion towards that same act. Bellamy is so good. Clear S tier character. Do it, just make him a straw hat. Itomimizu would have been great as the lookout 
out in the crow's nest of the ship. All right, that, that, that was unexpected. But if you don't remember, Ito Mimizu was the announcer of the Davy Back fight, and taking that into consideration, he was once a legal candidate to become a crew member. Luffy could have picked any one of the Foxy Pirates to become a Straw Hat. And hey, you know, look, if we're not gonna go with Carrot, then I do agree that Ito Mimizu would have made an amazing lookout. And he could also act as the hype man for the crew, just announcing them wherever they go. Also, fun fact, Ito Mimizu means Tubafex worm, which gives some much needed context to his rather worm-inspired character design. The only valid pick is Emu. I will noy be convinced otherwise. Very interesting use of the word valid happening there. But instead of Emu, I'm going to go with this commenter's name, which is conveniently Marco. Because Marco got brought up a lot. You guys really want Marco to join the crew. To which I say, just let the poor bird man retire. Although it would be pretty awesome to throw a former emperor commander onto the crew in order to compliment the warlord that Luffy stole. And thinking about it, Marco would be a pretty great lookout as well, what with the whole being a bird thing. But then again, the dude has options. I mean, he could have joined Shanks if he wanted to. So of everyone we've spoken about so far, I think that Marco is actually the most unrealistic dream. Yes, even more realistic than the zombies and the worm. Fujitora and Katakuri and Kuzan, they respect Luffy. All right, that's, that's a lot of heavy hitters to cover in one go. But Fujitora has always struck me more as the kind of guy who would join the Revolutionary Army. He's just so thoroughly anti-establishment and the Straw Hats don't really care about changing the world. It's more that they're going to do it incidentally whilst fulfilling their own selfish desires. Meanwhile, Kuzan did actually take that ever so naughty step and become a filthsome pirate, but it's quite clear that his taste is more in the cherry pie direction. And Katakuri, He's cool, very cool even, but he just, he overlaps with Luffy a bit too much, similar powers, similar future sight. So come on, you, you gotta give me someone more reasonable. Foxy, no explanation needed. All right, that's fair enough. 